Um, so hi everyone. For this episode of Use Case, we actually wanted to have a chat to you and explore a little bit behind the scenes of why Raymond and I actually started recording Use Case Show. Um, so for me, it all started when Raymond reached out um, and I had always followed the content put out by Legal Pioneer. I've always enjoyed the very data-driven approach to analyzing the legal tech and the rec tech market. Um, it seemed like a very accurate, good way of looking at what's happening in the space. Um, so yeah, Raymond reached out and he had this idea um, to have this show and it sounded amazing. So maybe Raymond, could you talk mm -hmm. a bit about what your, what was your original mission and why you wanted to do use case? Thanks. Um, the original mission was I've been watching a lot of videos when, uh, when we were capturing uh, profiles on companies, uh, usually have their own YouTube video. And so we set up a channel called legalcomplex.com slash TV. And we have over 600 uh, videos, promo videos, short videos. Uh, but what I was missing was always um, there was a lot of talking about the product, but you never could see it. And there was always, um, it was always feature driven and not the use case or why it's useful. So um, I reached out to you, I said, you know what? I have this idea, I wanna make a, a video series um, and chop it up in episodes. And then um, basically pick out the, the companies that have a really clear use case and then walk through the use case and see how that translates to the uh, uh, to the screen. And the, the main goal was to keep it short. Uh, we don't have those long uh, podcast type uh, conversations, but just quick to the point. Uh, basically, it should look like an ad. That was the uh, that was the idea. So uh, why why did nice. you join? Nice. Yeah. Um, well, I've also seen a lot of videos out there of different products and I've seen actually a lot of demos of products and I've given a lot of demos of products. And I remember when we had our first conversation, um, thinking that actually getting startups and working with them and figuring out the best way to demonstrate their products is very often not about the solution, but it is about the problem that it solves. Um, and that tends to be for most, in most sort of demo meetings, um, the thing that stakeholders complain about is that, you know, that startups focus so much on the features, not on the use case or the problem that it solves. So I just love the idea of having a show around that concept and bringing the use case forward, not necessarily the solution and the solution coming as, as a response to that. So that, that's actually what caught my um, attention. And then, yeah, I really like, interesting companies that are entering the space and kind of having an opportunity to put a spotlight on them and show to the world what they can do. That, that was also my, um, my goal is to highlight the, the companies that usually hide in the shadows uh, that most people don't see. That was, um, that was one of the, the missions uh, included. So what have you learned um, shooting these episodes? Yeah, I think yeah, we both learned that it's really, really hard to succinctly deliver and explain and communicate what your product does um, in a very short period of time, which is, I guess, the, the fun and, challenge. And show the screens as well, because sometimes, you know, due to computer lag or whatever, uh, and jumping around on, in the menus, that makes it complicated to, you know, go straight from upload the document or, you know, click here and then get the end result. It, it is sometimes, it is a long process. So, But I do have to, I think the learning is, because we sort of had to um, have a bit of a process of how we prepare startups for the demos. Yeah. And usually what I found was the most helpful thing is to get to the bottom of the core value proposition as quickly as possible and then build mm -hmm. the demo around that because a demo is essentially a story that you tell. It's not just an opportunity to show every little feature that the product has, yeah. it's a story. And when you have just a few minutes, it makes it so much more important to tell that story well. And so I think as soon as with every startup, as soon as we kind of got to the core of that's the value add, that's the key problem that they solve, that's the sort of the core of the use case, then you can kind of design 
the demo around it as a story that shows how that use case is solved. Again, rather than thinking of every little feature and then trying to make sure you fit showing that those features in the short period of time. So I think figuring out that core is probably, um, yeah, the key thing. So what are you going to do next? Or what should we do next? <laughs> um, yeah, so I have uh, started a really exciting project um, beginning of September and it's accelerating even faster than I had imagined. So I'm working on a femtech uh, lab, a, co a company called femtech lab. So it's so femtech, first of all, it's digital health and wellness products and services that target women's health and wellness. So anything that has to do with women's reproductive health, but not just that, also mental health, um, building any kind of general health and wellness solutions with women-centric design in mind. Because um, I guess the key, the key thing that's been happening is that most uh, therapies, like even wellness advice that we read online has not been tested on women. And women's bodies are different um, in some really fundamental ways. And there's more and more research coming out now and more and more women are in the economic um, position to afford products and to create products themselves. So there's this kind of paradigm shift happening in the world where there's a sector that appeared called femtech that's just growing really quickly. That in the beginning seems to everyone like a niche, but now finally investors and entrepreneurs are realizing that it's actually targeting 50% of the world population. And so it's not a niche, it's a it's like a blue ocean of, of opportunities over 50%. that was percent yeah over 50 percent that's right <clears throat> um and it's like this blue ocean of opportunities that has been under our noses for a really long time um so it's, it's really exciting space and uh me and my co-founder we're working on um a company that essentially does three things it's an accelerator program and we're launching that in spring next year um, it's a media platform. So for anyone that wants to know what's up in femtech, in the business of femtech, what startups are there, what investment is, is there, uh, we're going to have a media platform for that. Um, and finally, we're going to be raising a fund um, probably closer to 2022 once to kind of get the accelerator program running. Cool. Exciting. I hope you'll keep watching us. Uh, I've already have a, a two new... Uh, a, a couple of new ideas on how to do season two. So this is a season one wrap up. And uh, again, wanted to thank you for your time. And good luck. Oh, I have one more thing, by the way. I have a little gift. So nice. I really like it. I love the black and white. Me too. <laughs> Thank you.